Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for inviting me for this presentation in your conference here in South Korea. My name is Einstein Lennartsen and I work as the senior consultant in the city of Copenhagen. Today I'm going to talk on the retrofit challenge in Copenhagen in the green and just transition. As we are all aware of, the global temperature has been constantly rising since uh, we started <clears throat> the Industrial Revolution back in the 18th century. Therefore, Copenhagen has taken a very ambitious uh, goal of being becoming a CO2 neutral in 2025. It began in 2012, where we adopted the Copenhagen Climate Plan 2025. And during this period, we have adopted three roadmaps, one in, in, in 2016, one in 2018, and now one again in 2020. This roadmap has been an effective tool to ensure that the goals that we set out uh, has been evaluated and adjusted to the change of time. And most of the consumption from the carbon emissions comes from energy use in buildings and from transportation. And we will here try to address the issues concerning the consumption from, um, from the built sector. <clears throat> we want to reduce heat consumption by 20%, the electricity consumption by 20%, and also installing solar panels corresponding to 1% of the electricity consumption in 2025. But how can we do that? Right now, when we look at the Copenhagen, especially the old part, Copenhagen is dominated by pre-1960 buildings who needs refurbishment to meet, en meet modern energy standards. <clears throat> And even though we do build new housing, still more than 80% of all housing that exists today will still exist in 2015. So we have a need for scalable solution. That smaller collective housing association <clears throat> often lack expertise and therefore need our support in constructing new energy communities or um, refurbishment. Currently, we are running Energy Leap as a network program where large professional building owners uh, optimize their energy. The Energy Leap network consists of 20% of the Copenhagen build, uh, building's mass. We are also engaged in renovation of the public housing and currently we have uh, initiatives for 42 renovations, approximately 11,000 households. And when it comes to urban renewal, we have the possibility to give public grants for renovations and make demonstration projects. <clears throat> and there we can support with up to 33% of um, the costs. To make things more effective, to drive the development we have evolved, we have developed what we call a climate task force. And the organization of the climate task force is to make an vertical organizational structure between the citizens 
and the central strategic level. Here at the Integrated Urban Renewal, we work with uh, the single estates, the citizens and the neighborhoods, and at the Climate Secretariat, they work with the centralized and the strategic level. And closing the gap between the local and the strategic level is one of many uh, barriers for uh, changing the city systems. I assure, I'm, I, I assume that you will know that in your city as well. So how do local demonstration areas look like? <clears throat> A local demonstration network and local demonstration area consists of disadvantaged uh, estates of local actors like schools, um, companies, institutions, etc. And the urban renewal is built on three pillars. The building itself, where we work with the residents, the courtyard that is surrounded by buildings where we can work with um, quite a string of initiatives and then the area where the buildings, the courtyards, and everybody is, where we work holistically for a five year period. This map shows you how we perceive Copenhagen with marginalized areas. That is approximately 20% of the city where uh, the living conditions are below uh, municipality average. Going into the courtyards. Here is an example of a courtyard that is on its uh, that is about to be implemented. It will open uh, next summer, uh, so there's no pictures yet. But we have transformed an old courtyard uh, that we will now be able to um, stimulate the senses by sounds and lights we'll be able to uh, withhold stormwater and rain uh, and thereby ensuring that cellars and the neighborhood is not flooded and also we have here worked with carbon emission neutral um, machinery in the construction and with circular economy in the design. And the result is that 93% of the inhabitants voted yes, that we have uh, the first courtyard with a rainwater lake and that the building and the construction through circular thinking has been lowered tremendously. Looking at buildings, we are currently engaged in setting up solar uh, panels in the solar district northwest. One of the main concerns when it's when we talk about the existing city is that solar city solar panels not only should be uh, effective from an energy point of view, but also aesthetically acceptable. Therefore, we have here developed new solar panels with red uh, tiles that imitate the original red tiles of 
the neighborhood and thereby ensuring that the architectural uh, heritage is not uh, jeopardized. Another example is the Copenhagen climate block. It just opened uh, this summer, uh, where a whole block of apartments has been renovated. And we have put up a new facade on the inside that <clears throat> shows different use of technologies, different use of materials, and designing it by an open source, meaning that um, anybody can uh, copy the blueprint, can have access to the technologies if they want to. So this was the story of some examples in the courtyards and the buildings. And now I will turn to the integrated urban renewal. This is locally based and it involves not only the physical, but also the so social and cultural dimensions. When we want to make a change towards a green transition, it also needs to be just and fair, meaning that it should also take in uh, improvement of the socio-economic life of the citizens. In South Harbor District, we worked from 2014 until last year, 2019, by establishing an energy forum where we dived into the South Harbor situation to see if we could uh, improve not only living conditions, but also the energy transition. South Harbor is a small district in the south of Copenhagen, and it is part of the disadvantaged areas in the city. There live approximately 10,000 people in this area, and it's distributed over 7,500 uh, apartments. In 2014, we looked at the use of heat, and the map shows here that the best consumption level green is not represented, the next best is not represented either, that it is the two lowest um, heat consumption areas in the city. The same goes for the use of water. Also here, it was lower than average for the city. So we wanted to give the neighborhood the possibility to save water and energy. Energy savings of 11.5% and water savings with 10%. To do that, we constructed the Energy Forum South Harbor with participants from the university, the urban development the local committee and 
the Climate Secretariat at the Technical and Environmental Administration. We wanted to target building owners in apartment buildings and thereby constructing a living lab, a platform for new partnerships when it comes to energy efficiency. We conducted a string of campaigns and educational um, initiatives. We also had um, the university making tests of new technologies. And in the end, we made it possible to reduce the use of heat by 7.7 .7 and the use of water by 11. Now we are taking the experience from South Harbor to two new areas, one in Allersrogade, where we want to make the neighborhood more open and diverse better connected to the rest of the city, a safer and more healthy area and family oriented. We are right now engaged in establishing a baseline and an energy target for this for this area, as well with Bispe Quartier, where safety and urban life is also very uh, central, but also reduction of noise levels from especially car traffic. This is a, a, an area where we also would like to think more uh, electrical uh, mobility into the plan. So, the goal of the Climate Task Force is to integrate the Copenhagen Climate Plan, closing the gap between the citizens and the strategic level, engage the citizens in the green transformation, and collect and scale the good solutions to other parts of Copenhagen. Well, thank you for your attention, and I look forward to continue this conversation with you and all the other attendees.